So, so yeah, so I'll be talking about undefined behavior and the F poison, these kind of things. So before we start, let me just say that, you know, this is work with these amazing folks there. So uh, Gilur, Jun Yangi, Yung Seom Kim, Yung Jun Song uh, from Seoul National University. And then those guys that you already know, Sanjoy, David Minamer, and John Rigier. So probably we've seen some emails on the LVM mailing list already. So I'll try to summarize what has been going on. Um, so, you know, what's the motivation for having this poison and, and F, why they, are, why they are actually broken, and, you know, uh, and a proposal to, to fix uh, these problems. Okay, so let's take a look at and F first. So here we have a very simple example in C where, you know, X is only initialized in one of the branches. Okay, and so if we compile this with Clang, we get the following IR, so no surprise for anyone. So we get these loads and stores. And if you run our um, SR away, we get the following IR. So we get the phi node and on the branch that X was not initialized, we get NDEF, okay? Because you know we don't know exactly what to put there. And so of course we didn't actually need to have NDEF. We could just say, well, it's zero because we initialized all variables to zero, right? But if you did that, you know, LVM will add this, uh, will have an additional XOR, which, you know, it's two extra bytes per this kind of phi nodes. So, and since we don't really want this, you know, uh, phi and F is very useful, okay? So, and F, you know, has a very good motivation, serves this very good purpose, you know, and it seems great, okay? And, and F has been in LVM since I can re remember. Unfortunately, at some point, people realized that NDEF was not actually enough to do everything that we actually want to do. Okay, so let me give one example. So say that A and B are int in C, and we want to perform that, that transformation, okay? So, of course, in school algebra, this is correct, so we just subtract A from both sides. Uh, but we know that if we have overflow, this is actually not correct. But since in C, overflow, we integer, with sign of the integer is undefined behavior, then we, we, we should be able to perform this, this transformation, okay? The question is, you know, the IR that we get uh, is, you know, is this N NSW, and NSW stands for no signed wrap. So it means, you know, we don't actually care what add returns if, um, if it overflows. But we kind of need to define what it means, you know, we don't care. So one approach would be, you know, add NSW returns NDEF if it overflows, okay? Let's try that. Uh, and then we have this example where, you know, A is int max and B is one. So of course, A plus B will overflow, okay? So, and so let's assume that we get NDEF. And so the, Addition, we get NDEF, and then we, we say NDEF greater than int max. But by definition, there's no integer that is greater than int max, so the comparison is always false, okay? On the right-hand side, we have, you know, B greater than zero, so it's one greater than zero, so this is true, okay? So now, you know, we have different results before and after optimization, so this transformation is actually wrong, okay? So we started by saying, you know, Overflow is undefined behavior in C to say, oh, it returns ZenDef in LVMIR, uh, but, but then we cannot justify that the transformation is correct, okay? And that's why then in LVM we introduce poison, um, and, then, and then, you know, any, opti any instruction that receives poison as input, you know, it returns poison, and we can actually uh, justify this transformation by saying that NSW returns poison on overflow. Okay, so a second example um, on why NDEF is not sufficient. So let's imagine this very simple loop, okay? Let's imagine that we are compiling for a 64-bit architecture where, you know, int is 32 bits and the pointer is 64 bits, okay? So we have this mismatch between the points, pointer size and the index size. So if we compile to LFMIR, uh, 
we get that sine extent in, uh, in the loop body because you know it, we have to go, we have to convert int to long, right? Um, to index the array. And so the sine extent is usually not free on many architectures. And on my desktop machine, if I get rid of this sine extent, actually I get the 39% speed up, okay? So we badly want to do this optimization, right? So, you know, transform i and n into longs. So, of course, in general, this is not correct because by going from int to long, we change the overflow behavior. But since overflow for ints is undefined behavior, again, we should be able to do this kind of, of transformation. Okay. So, what we are comparing you now is this i plus one plus one plus one greater, uh, smaller or equal to n. Okay. So, if there is no overflow ever with this, in this summation, we can, you know, it's correct to upgrade to long because, you know, if there's no overflow with a smaller type, you know, there's no overflow with a bigger type. So the, the only question is, you know, on overflow, is optimization correct or not? And so let's, again, let's consider that N, N, add NSW there returns NDEF if it overflows, okay? So what we would get, you know, on overflow, we would get NDEF less or equal than N. But so if N is int max, then this comparison is always true, right? Because, you know, all numbers are smaller or equal to int max. But if i was converted to long, then, you know, int max plus one is actually representable, and then, you know, the comparison would be false, okay? So, again, we, we get different results, which means the optimization would be wrong, okay? So, we cannot justify the widening of induction variables by saying that, you know, n, uh, that NSW is NDEF, okay? And, and Poison makes this optimization work, and then you can get your 39% speed up, okay? So, okay, you might be tempted to say, you know, sign of arithmetic in C is undefined behavior, so why, cannot, why can't we do it in LVM IR as well? No? That's a perfectly valid question. And, but we cannot actually do that, or we don't want to, to do that. Let's see why. So if we, so if x plus one is loop invariant, so we may want to hoist this addition out of the loop, right? So in terms of LLVM IR, we want to get rid of this N NSW uh, from the loop body. The problem is if we define NNSW to be undefined behavior on overflow, uh, this transformation is not correct if the loop would never execute, say N is equal to zero, right? Because now we would be always executing this addition, and before the transformation, you know, the, the um, addition was conditional whether the loop executed or not. Okay, so we cannot just say, you know, addition is undefined behavior on overflow. And in general, we don't want to define most things as undefined behavior. So we want as few things as possible to be undefined behavior so that we you know we can hoist stuff uh, easily. Okay, so just, as a summary, you know, Poison and NDEF have very good reasons to exist. So NDEF, you know, was for this SSA construction, for padding, these kind of things. And Poison, we need for these very simple, like even simple algebraic sim simplifications, we already need Poison uh, to widen induction variables, these kind of things. And then undefined behavior is only for instructions that, you know, trap the CPU, like, division by zero, load from null pointer, this kind of thing, okay? Because then, you know, these kind of instructions are very hard to move uh, past control flow, okay? Okay, so, you know, we have seen that, you know, we have very good reasons to have poison and NDEF, but now l let's see why they're actually problematic, okay? So, first example, this is quite shocking example, at least to me, which is, you know, you cannot easily duplicate the uses of uh, SSA value. So let's consider this very simple rewrite. So you go from, you know, two times x to x plus x, because maybe in your architecture, addition is faster, okay? But now consider the case that x is NDEF, okay? So before 
the optimization, we get you know two times n de uh, and def, and after the optimization, you get n def plus n def, which is equal to n def. So before we would get you know even numbers only, and after the optimization, we get any number. So this very simple transformation is actually wrong in LVM IR. Okay, and today, so this particular transformation LVM does not do it, so it replaces. Uh, two times x with x shifted by one, but uh, but you, you see that even very simple tr transformations are actually wrong, because we have these semantics where you know each read of ndef can return a different value. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so hoisting plus control flow. So we have this one divided by k inside of the loop, right? And you know. Since it's within this if condition um, that says you know k is non-zero, you know, it seems reasonable to hoist this division out of the loop, right? And so we can do that, and we just create some some temporary variable and we hoist it. What's the problem? Is that again, so since each read of ndef can return a different value, we can have this impossible case where k is non-zero and we divide by zero. Okay. So this is strange at the first sight, but you know, this means that right now it's impossible to hoist any division out of loops in LVM. And so LVM used to do this, and now it does not, because you know, we, cannot, we cannot ever basically prove that it's safe to, to hoist uh, divisions. Okay. And so it's, you know, we were supposed to be able to do these kind of things. Um, Okay, so another problem with poison and NDEF, it's not, it becomes a bit tricky to mix them. So InstCombine these days is doing this transformation, okay, because it kind of looks reasonable because this NDEF can take any value, you know, we can say, okay, if it can take any value, it can be equal to X. Okay, so we can replace the select with X. Um, okay, but the problem is this is wrong if X is poison because you know, poison is strictly more powerful than ndef, so you cannot replace ndef with poison you know, when c is false. So even these simple transformations that InstCombine is doing today uh, are wrong, okay? okay. Just one more example. Um, so GVN and loop and switching, they require slightly different semantics for the IR. So let's see, so loop and switch, you know, conceptually it's a very simple optimization, right? So it hoists the, um, the if condition out of the loop. But this means that now in the transform program, we are evaluating C2 before C, okay? And this means that, you know, branch on poison cannot be undefined behavior. Otherwise, you know, now we are branching on C2, and if C2 is poison, we have just introduced undefined behavior if the loop never executes. So for loop and switching, it seems that you know, branch on poison has to be some sort of non-deterministic choice between the two branches. Okay. But now let's take a look at GVN. So GVN today, so we look at this example and say, you know, inside of this if statement, it seems that uh, T, W, and Y are all equivalent. And it seems reasonable to conclude this. And so it means that I can remove one of these um, operations. So GVN today will do this transformation. Okay? It will remove W and replace W with Y, for example. Okay? This looks reasonable. However, um, this requires uh, branch on poison to be undefined behavior. To see why? Because like, imagine that Y was poison. Okay? Uh, if y was poison, but w and x were not, we have just replaced the call to foo with, you know, with a normal value, with a call to foo with, with a poison value, okay? And this is wrong. And so, but if branching on poison was an defined be behavior, then, you know, the original program would have already executed an defined be be behavior, so we can do, you know, whatever tr transformation you want. So, you know, so for G GVN, you actually need branch to be undefined behavior. 
But this contradicts loop and switching because for loop and switching, we said, oh, we actually we need the branch on poison to be um, non-deterministic choice. Okay? And so LVM has both of these transformations. Uh, they contradict each other. And right now, it's possible to trigger miscompilation by running both. Okay? So if you construct an example like this by hand, you'll get a miscompilation today. Okay, so just to summarize, you know, again, poison and, and death are very well justified, uh, you know, the, to exist. But you know, we have problems. You know, the current definition of undef, where you know each use is a different value, it's problematic. So there's no way right now to soundly use GVN and loop and switching at the same time. Um, and you know, poison and undef don't actually play very well together. It seems. Okay, so. The question is, you know, you have all these problems, can we fix them? And, you know, a lot of people, very smart people have tried in the past. I, I've tried in the past as well, we all fail. But apparently now we have something that seems to work. Um, and the proposal is actually pretty simple. Um, so we said that undef and poison don't work well together, so we just remove one of them. Uh, you know, very simple thing to do, and we choose to remove undef. Okay, and at the same time, we introduce a new poison value in the IR. So, in the same way where you can write end up, you can now write poison. And we introduce a new instruction, we, which we will see in the next few slides, called freeze. That you know, freeze when it takes a poison value, it just returns a non-deterministic value. It's kind of similar like the new, like the old end up, but all reads of this, uh, of y will return the same value, okay? So it's undef, but all users see the, the same value. And, you know, as we have today, you know, all instructions, or most instructions, uh, taking poison, we return poison, except phenodes, nodes, freeze, and select. And then, finally, the slightly controversial to some, branch on poison would be, would be undefined behavior, okay? So it's a very simple proposal, and now I'm kind of I'll show you know how it solves all the problems that I've described. Okay. So this poison, you know, we, we are not changing what poison is. Um, so you know, and of zero and poison is still poison. Okay. So no changes there. So freeze this new instruction. So you know it returns a non-deterministic value. So if we do uh, uh, y and zero, we get zero. If you do y and one, we know that you know the first bits are all zero, and the last bit you know can be zero or one, just like all undef. The new thing is, is now if I do XOR of y y, we are guaranteed to get zero. Okay, not like old undef, you know XOR and def and def, we would get undef. So now all use, so all uses of this value see exactly um, the same value. Okay. So that's the new instruction. Okay, so now we can go back and see, you know, we had this problem with GVN and loop and switching. You know, we can see how we can fix this. So for loop and switching, the fix is quite simple. So if we f so the problem was we were hoisting the, the evolution of C2, but so if we freeze this, this, this C2, so now even if C2 is poison, it becomes a non-deterministic value. So now suddenly we have a non-deterministic jump there, so which is what what we wanted, okay? And GVN, since we define a branch on poison, you know, doesn't require any change for correctness, at least. So, so but as Daniel pointed out in the mailing list, you know, if you want to optimize freeze, then you need to make uh, some changes. But for c correctness, you know, GVN becomes uh, fine, okay? So now you, you can go back and do loop and switching and GVN on the same um, function, okay? Okay, so in general, you know, freeze is great to avoid any find behavior, right? So that's the mission of freeze. So here I'll show, you know, um, a rewrite that is combined us to, to today. So it goes from a select of divisions to a division of select, okay? Um, and so we need to change this transformation to use freeze because we are defining select. So, okay, there's a lot of controversy on what, the, what select actually means. 
So we are saying that select is poison if the condition is poison. Okay, so we need to freeze this condition to make sure that you know uh, the value that we uh, that we are dividing from you know is not poison. Okay, so I could argue that today this pattern is uh, is already wrong in is combined. So, but since we are not sure exactly what select means, uh, you know I cannot say whether it's wrong or not. But um, but yeah, but for the new semantics, we need the freeze there. Okay, for bit fields. So we are changing, so now we don't have um, an F anymore. So a load from uninitialized value is poison. Okay, so we need to change how Clang lowers uh, bit fields. So we have a few alternatives. The one that we have implemented in our prototype is like this. So you need to load a value. We need, you need to freeze it because it might be the first time that you are loading this bit field. You, load, you need to freeze the value that you are storing then you combine them you know, with, the, with bitwise operations and then you store it back, okay? Then from that point on, uh, the bit field will always be non-poison, okay? So this mimics what Clang does to today. The difference is that we need to insert these two freezes. So an alternative way, which I think seems a bit better to me, is to use um, loads of vectors um, and then we can say, you know, I'm loading uh, a set of bits, like 32 I1s, and then since the semantics is that, you know, each element of, of the vector, you know, they don't taint uh, each other, so, you know, we, we can just load these bits, do insert element or shuffles or whatever you want, and then you store back this vector. Okay. So with this, we don't, you don't need any poison, uh, sorry, you don't need any freeze, and you know you get perfect store forwarding and these kinds of things. Uh, the caveat is that our code gen today is not great for these kind of um, of, of loads and stores of vectors of I1, so we would need to fix that. But I think going forward, this seems kind of a better way of lowering bit fields. Um, right. So the caveat is that you may need a lot of insert elements, um, or we can go back to lower. Uh, bit fields as we used to do when Clang was born, which was in, you know, using um, LVM structs. Um, but you know, at that point, the performance was not good because, again, the code gen was not good for these kind of things, but we may want to, to revisit that. But anyway, this is like long-term plan if you want to improve how bit fields are, are lowered. Okay. Okay, so load winding. Um, GVN today does load winding, so we are, I mean, I'm not sure whether we want to keep, keep uh, doing that um, at this level or whether we should do it at, you know, at machine instruction level or something like that, but if we want to do that, we need to change slightly how load winding is, is done, so we cannot just load, you know, widen to a bigger type because you know, if the following bits are either uninitialized or poison, you know, they will taint the whole value. So we need to, again, use uh, loads of vectors such that you know, um, the following bits don't taint the value that we're trying to load. And I think this, you know, this syntax is actually pretty neat, I think, because it actually shows the compiler that your intent, right? Because you are actually loading two things, you are, and uh, you know, they, the user, so the consumers are interested in only you know, part of the stuff that you are loading. And as Hal was, uh, sorry, as Philip was pointing out to me yesterday, uh, you know, if you need atomics, for example, you could say that no, the atomic is per element. And so you could have, you know, wide and, and shrinking, you know, working. Um, that today you can actually not do this, uh, this, this run trip. So it seems actually good to go to this kind of uh, vector loads. Okay. So this kind of concludes the part of, you know, I kind of show what's the changes, how to patch LVM to, to go to the new semantics. Um, and now, you know, we have implemented this, um, this proposal and we have uh, run a few benchmarks. Um, Okay, sorry. Even before that, um, you know, so 
to deploy this thing, you know, um, this is a very um, sketchy plan, but you know, first we need to add the freeze plus code gen, then we need to change Clang to start uh, loading bit fields with freeze. We need to add auto upgrade, we'll see in a second. And then we can start fixing the bugs that are in LVM, all the inst combined bugs, open switching, these kind of things to use freeze. Uh, you know, replace all uses of undev with poison. In some cases, you will need to use uh, freeze poison, but uh, in most cases, you know, poison will be sufficient to replace all undevs. And then, you know, finally, you just kill undev, and that's it. And, you know, perf regressions. And also, you know, uh, we should run some um, IR fuzzing tools. So Al Alive has a, has a secret mode where we can actually um, check whether an optimization uh, is um, run correctly or not. So, you know, it, it has a lot of limitations, but we can find bugs with these kind of tools. And, you know, just to gain some confidence that now LVM is finally correct. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, okay, so auto upgrade, uh, we need is, you know, because since we are killing NDEF, we need to get rid of it. So, NDEF is basically equivalent to a freeze poison with one use. So, you know, we can just replace NDEF with freeze poison. And then, thanks to Eli for pointing out this to me. Um, so, load also needs to be patched with this crazy sequence because since we don't have NDEF anymore, um, you know, we need to load bit by bit, then freeze it, the individual bits, and then we bit cast again. Okay. So, the auto upgrade will look a bit scary. We can, of course, optimize the sequence if we know that the stored value is not poison, but you know the general sequence will be look something like this. Okay. Then, um, regarding code gen, I have more questions and answers, so I'm not an expert in the code gen. So I'm looking forward to you know to know you know what exactly how this looks like in the new uh, instruction selection. Um, there's also this discussion whether we want poison at selection dag and machine instruction level, um, and what, does, what are the implications, and how to better lo um, lower freeze poison, whether you, know, you just replace it with zero, whether we use this trick that, that Reed was um, uh, mentioned of you know, just use base pointer or stack pointer because these are usually constant throughout the, the function, so you know, just reuse one of these registers. So, you know. Our implementation that I'll show in, in a second, you know, is a very, um, a very naive uh, glow ring. So, you know, we, we can do much better there. Okay, so let's see some numbers. So, what we did, so we just added, you know, freeze to loop and switch. Uh, we changed bit fields, a few in combined fixes plus a few new optimizations like freeze of freeze is equal to freeze. And, uh, and yeah, we lower this freeze poison with this hack of copy from reg, copy to reg, to, to pin down you know, one register per, per freeze. Okay. And then we compare dash tree with dash tree with our um, implementation. Okay. So let's start with spec, which is what everyone loves. So, Positive here means uh, we get a slowdown, and negative means we get the speed up. Okay, so the worst case is GCC, where we get around like one percent slowdown, because you know, um, and I think it might be because it has a lot of bit fields actually, and then we we get this weird six percent speed up um, on this last benchmark. We didn't investigate exactly what's going on, but it's probably you know we we still didn't do all the work required. So, for example, loop and, uh, loop and rolling sometimes gets blocked and it actually doesn't kick in. So it might be that some optimization is, is not kicking in and, it, and that's actually good. And, uh, and you get the 6% speed up. Um, but anyway, but the performance is not horrible, right? So the worst is like 1%, but overall it's, we actually we get a slight speed up. So it means that blocking some optimization is actually some good. <laughs> Uh, in spec. Um, for LNT, overall, we get 0.18% um, slowdown. 
Uh, and mainly the problem, we get these big regressions and it's due to loop and rolling, so we didn't fix loop and rolling yet because sometimes it's just see freeze and say, oh, I don't know what freeze is and just gives up. Okay, so we need to fix that. But the compile time is mostly unchanged in, um, in LNT. We also compile these uh, single file programs, including SQLite 3 amalgamation. And mostly the compile time and memory consumption is flat on, ev on everything except GCC. Because again, G this is like GCC 2 point something. It has a lot of bit fields. And since we are, we are using this naive uh, lowering of bit fields with two freezes, then we see uh, this 5% increase in number of instructions. And 2.5% um, of, of instructions overall are freeze. So this is like the worst case scenario that we have seen. Um, overall is like 0.1% of freezes. Um, Okay, so just another topic that Dan raised on the mailing list. Um, you know, this is a problem that we already have today, but you know, now that we are at, at it, I mean, we should fix these kind of things. So regarding static analysis, so most of LLVM static analysis, they, you know, they don't, they ignore poison. So for example, here, if I have this analysis that say is not zero, so is it safe to hoist this division or not? Okay, and the question is, if this D is poison, should the analysis return false? Um, should it return true and say, you know, this is true if you actually freeze uh, D or if you freeze something else? So it's not clear right now, you know, what's the right API for the static analysis. Um, Today, for example, is non zero always returns false because you know it's being conservative and saying, you know, I don't know if this is poison or not, so I can never prove that something is non zero. And that's why you know hoisting division is actually disabled. Um, and so but this is only relevant for or it seems right now it that is only relevant for you know, to hoist instruction past the control flow. So if you use this analysis just to do some expression rewrites. You know, the poison doesn't really matter because you know, um, um, because you can ignore the cases where the expression is is poison. So it's only relevant if we're hoisting stuff. And so you know, it's not clear right now. You know, what's the best API and um, this kind of thing. So and right now in LLVM, most analysis you know just ignore poison, and but we need to take a look. We need to revisit this. Okay. Okay. So just to. Conclude, um, you know, I hope I've convinced you that, you know, LVMIR cannot stay the way it is today. So, you know, it's great that we have indefinite poison, but they are slightly broken. And so we propose, you know, a quite simple proposal, you know, just kill undef and let's use poison everywhere. And, you know, the, our early prototype results, you know, seem kind of re reasonable. And now call for action, of course, some homework. No, please go on the mailing list and comment if you like this, if you don't like this, if it breaks your architecture or something. Please vote if you want to see this uh, going through or not. If you work on CodeGen, please you know review the design because that's our weakest point here. So we need someone to take a look at you know selection that game I begin and these kind of things and. You know, please review to, uh, please volunteer to review patches to help us, you know, fix regressions in your favorite uh, optimization, these kind of things. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, we have some time for questions. So I feel bad, I wrote an email while you were talking that I'd been meaning to write for a while, so I thought I'd also just tell you so you didn't have to like get off the stage and look and read it an email. Okay. So I like everything about this except for one thing, and that's the idea that we have, that, that you're actually kind of putting a type into the memory mm -hmm. in, in the IR all of a sudden. It's not a normal type, but the, the, the granularity of poison is somehow attached to a type. 
and even propagated through memory. And I think that that doesn't work in LLVM's IR. That would be a much bigger change than the rest of your proposal. Um, we don't have typed memory. Um, mm -hmm. you, you talked a lot about how integers are different from vectors of I1s, mm -hmm. but they aren't. The entire optimizer assumes they're the same. Um, and, and so I don't know that that's going to work well. Uh, but I think that I just want to see you guys explore other other ways of solving that particular piece of the problem because I think the poison versus undef part you've gotten really, really well. So I'm really happy about that part. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, so our um, our thought is is like um, so memory should be a vector of i ones basically. So because so we thought about having a poison, you know, per bit or something, but uh, things get really complicated, so we couldn't make it work. So we decided, you know, we need poison, you know, per value. But then when it gets to memory, you know, we we need to know what's the access size so that you know we can um, uh, widen the thing to the value. And so yeah, so it's true that you know the way, that, like, if you load uh, a vector, if you load uh, just one value, so it becomes different. But yeah, so we couldn't make it work if you had just you know per bit. Um, so it's really complicated. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we can uh, explore more on the memory side. Um, yeah, so, and the code gen itself, it's not very optimal right now for this kind of crazy vector loads and stars that we, we are doing, so. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, I'm a bit of an outsider, but I would like to test your statement that IR is broken. Okay. So uh, how, you can quantify how many times you've seen a problem attributed to this behavior in a mm -hmm. real benchmark or I don't know, give me some degree of understanding okay. how urgent it is. Okay, so for example, for hoisting divisions out of loops, so it was removed of LVM because you know, it was triggered in real life and then um, it was removed. So, um, so there were bugs, bug reports about this. Um, for other things, you know, I, I don't have real numbers to show, so I can tell you that it's very easy for me to go and write examples by hand that trigger these compilations. Um, I don't have numbers. Um, I can also say that, for example, all the compilers have exactly the same problem. So uh, I'm looking at, for example, Visual Studio Compiler. I've, not, I've seen real miscompilations because of similar problems. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have any real data. Um, have you explored or quantified in any way, like what, how much we would lose by just turning load into, you know, an unspecified but guaranteed consistent result always, like effectively turning it into what you've, you're currently formalizing as freeze of poison? Like so, but it would be an, obviously a non-constant value, it would be tied to an instruction and therefore you would, you know, you'd be able to reason about like that thing being, a, you know, how that was used and like it always having to have a consistent value still. So that, it feels like most of the behaviors that like introduce a lot of complexity mm -hmm. here are all tied around the fact that like you, you're still trying to make load this inconsistent result, like. So. So you you are suggesting having NDEF as a instruction? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay. Um, so there are problems with that. For example, if you want to to duplicate a like to duplicate a load, for example, and then and it's from like some uninitialized memory. So now you have to say that these two loads will return the same value or something, and then it becomes tricky. I mean, you could say it's always zero, and then you know you have a deterministic value always. But if it's like an arbitrary value, then it's, it becomes tricky to, um, yeah, to do these kind of games of uh, duplicating instructions. So yeah, I think other people have explored these in the past. Um, like there have been like a couple of proposals with these and they've always failed because you know, it's the, 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 there are some corner cases that are hard. And you still have the problem of mixing this, this new and F with poison you know, uh, then it, you need to disable a couple of the optimizations because you know, you always need poison basically um, to do this, uh, you know, induction variable widening this 
in these kind of things. And that's why we are saying, okay, if you always need poison, no, let's just quick get rid of everything else and uh, let's just keep poison. So that was kind of the rationale. If I understand correctly, there's going to be a lot of freezes in like typical programs as a result of this, just like mm -hmm. all over the place, I guess. Is that correct? No. Uh, so, yeah, so in our benchmarks, so typic typically we had like 0.1% of instructions were freeze. So GCC was the worst one that had like 2.5% overall. So how do you intend to deal with the problem where freeze acts as an optimization barrier? Because 95% of LVM doesn't really care about poison or undef. You know, you people optimizations, combining things, mm -hmm. just, look, and you have this freeze instruction that just sits there as this optimization barrier that mm -hmm. it can't see through. Yeah. How will we avoid that being a problem throughout literally all of LVM? Right, so it's not, Completely, it, it's not true that it cannot completely see through, but you you need to teach the optimization what freeze is. So that's true. Um, the deal is that so freeze is, for example, is inserted by like loop and switching, this kind of thing. So it's not something that will be very common, hopefully. But um, yeah, but that's true that you need to teach optimizations how to take a look. And and for example, right now, like loop and rolling, you know, sometimes this doesn't kick in because you know it doesn't know what uh, what freeze is. So, but if we teach loop and rolling, you know, oh, freeze is not that bad, so uh, just do it. Um, so, so yeah, and our benchmarks show that the performance does not get super horrible, so. Uh, would, it, would it be correct to consider, like if you have any optimization that ignores undef, ignores poison, just doesn't care about undefined behavior or any of that, just a people optimization, and there's a freeze somewhere in there. Uh -huh. You pretend the freeze isn't there. Uh -huh. Is it still correct? Uh, you know, a people rewrite? Well, actually, you just do some people optimization, but there's a freeze in the way between the things you're trying to combine. Can you just pretend the freeze isn't there? How no, do you have no. to treat it semantically? No, no, you, yeah, you cannot ignore freeze in general, basically, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, but the deal is uh, freeze is not very common. So that's the, um, the thing. All right, so any last question? Otherwise, I think let's close the session. Um, yeah, thanks, the speaker. Thank you.